What is voxel art? Voxel art is a style of 3D modeling where you use voxels, which are tiny squares, to create a 3D model. You can think of voxel art as the pixel art of the 3D world. In fact, it is easy to learn and has a really unique style that you can utilize in your video games. Some of the most popular voxel art games are Trove, an action-adventure MMO where you and your friends can battle foes in a voxel-style environment. Another game is Ancient Dungeon VR, which is as it says in the title, a VR dungeon crawler roguelike game where you have to explore voxel art dungeons and try to reach the end. And finally, we have Teardown which is a voxel art game where you have to destroy environments piece by piece, knocking off voxels from buildings and objects. Now, you might be thinking, wait, you're missing one of the most popular video games that uses voxel art. Well, yes, Minecraft. However, Minecraft is technically not a voxel art game as it uses polygons and cube-like shapes but it's less cubes and more flat faces. Now, you could probably say this about a few voxel art games. Minecraft is more of pixel art attached to standard uh, geometric shapes like squares or ramps and stuff like that, uh, whereas actual voxel art is made up of loads of little cubes. So, how do you get started with making voxel art for your video games? Well, there's a tool called Magica Foxel, which is free to use and it's a great tool for making voxel art models for your 3D games. Let me show you how to download and get started with Magica Foxel. Okay guys, so we I'm on the Magica Foxel website by F. Eve Trace. Uh, it's available for Windows and Mac as you can see here and to download it all you need to do is come to this website the link will be in the description click download and this will take you to the github page now on the github page I normally just click this top one here uh, this one you it'll give you it'll download as you can see I've downloaded it right here and if we open this up here the folder you can see that is in this zip file now all you need to do is extract this to so you can see there's a folder in there you just extract this wherever you want i've exact extracted it straight in my c drive as magica foxel and then you can just go in here and double click on magica foxel to open it up and that will just work there's a lot of other things if you want your plugins you'll put it in the plugins folder um, if you want some palettes, you can add them here, but you don't have to add them here. If you have somewhere else with palettes, you can actually reference them from somewhere else. But let's get into Magica Foxel so I can give you a quick overview. Now, you can see here it is a clock I've uh, done in Magica Foxel using Foxel Art. Um, and let me show you what it looks like in my game. So I'm actually building a game right now, and all of this is using Foxel Art. As you can see, it's loads of little tiny cubes. You can see this monitor is made up of just cubes and it looks pretty cool. It's a nice, unique style. You can see these clocks at the top here where a timer for this one. Uh, there's a joystick and also a button. Along with this, I also have the robot that if we go to the scene and turn the lights on, uh, you can see this is also made in Magica Foxel and I can rig this up inside of so my mixer mode for his arms to get his arms to actually be able to move around. Obviously he doesn't have legs so he won't work too well in mixed mode. Uh, but if you were to do more of a humanoid character, you can slap it in mixed mode and use all of those as well and they will work fine. So let's go back to Magical Foxel and let me explain this. So when you first start this up, let's let's close this out. Let me go back to the folder and let me just double click this. This is just going to open up a fresh version of Magical Foxel, which you see here. Now on the left is your palette. So the colors you can use, you can see you've got painting, erasing and attaching. So if you, you can also see the size of your Foxel up here. It's defaulted to 40. You can pull it at 64. You can see the box become bigger um, which means if I select attach and just select let's say this color you can see I can attach it there I'm using a box version now you can use a voxel where you can only add one at a time or you can add a whole face so if you select the face you can see you, you can add on whole faces to sections here um, and you can actually drag this like this to do it quicker so that you can see up and down uh, and yeah these are some of the different features that Magica Foxel has now in here you can see they have some default stuff such as cars, um, I don't need to save that, and you can see here you have cars. 
Now if I select one of these cards and click this down arrow, it'll take me into edit mode for it. And if I press the up arrow, it actually takes me into scene mode. In scene mode, you can actually come in here, render it out, and actually see a nice rendered version. You'll see it takes a minute in here. Anyway, let's get back to the basics. Let's let's create a new project. So up here you see this little paper icon or double paper. Double will duplicate the current one to a new scene. And this one, single paper, will just create a whole new scene. We don't have to save this. And here you go. So on the left, you have your palettes. Now you can switch between different preset palettes. Number three is just a blank gray one. And what I normally do if I will select this folder here which allowed me to open another palette you can see i have an alchemy palette here which was for a game i was making it's just a nice set of colors now i'm going to select erase and select face mode and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click anywhere at the top here drag all the way down to remove everything in this little zone i can then add in this grid um you can see here there's different grids um and you can actually modify this I believe by going to this section and changing the frame. So if we made this 20, it would be double the maximum grid. Obviously, the small pixel grid is here, which will always show each individual grid shape. Uh, but 10 is pretty good for this. It gives you quite a good region uh, to use. Now, up here, we also have attach. Now, using attach and box select is, box select is the one I use mostly. And let's just create a, a little set of dirt on the ground let's create a little dirt cube so let's go like this then i'm going to select face mode which is this one here you can also press f or b to switch between uh face and box select mode and i'm just going to drag this up a little probably to the first layer there and there you go you can see we've got a little bit of um mud i'm gonna say and we can also add a different layer of mud here as well um and you can see you've got two tone style of mud Let's select the green and go one, two, three, and there you go. Now we've got like a little grass block. But let's say we don't want the corner. So I could press R to select erase mode, select box select, and on this corner here, I'm just going to drag it down, select and drag all corners like this. However, this is quite a lengthy way to do all corners. If you're making a completely symmetrical box, we can undo all of this and select the um, X and Y place this for the mirror mode so this will mirror what you do on each corner you can also select the Z, which would do it at the top here but you don't really need to select that right now you can see here we have this little cube it's, it's looking pretty good uh what i am going to do is i am going to fill out this oh, select t to go into attach mode uh, and you can fill out this corner here um there you go, you've got some sort of little grass and then we can actually attach to this to give it some more sort of like 3D effect. Um, you know. uh, and you can see here you can kind of do a nice little effect going the whole way around. Um, and yeah, you can just play with this, give it some sort of really nice uh, look. I'm just messing around adding a couple of little strands here, let's bring that up and just do a couple there. Kind of like that. And yeah, you kind of got like a nice little grass block there, but this is all kind of one color right now and it's cool, but it doesn't look that great. So let's let's add some shade. So let's select this. So if I press Alt and click on any block, you'll see it selects that color. Um, I'm going to select that color. I'm going to select the one darker. I'm going to select paint mode, which is G on the keyboard. I'm then going to come under here and under each uh, little segment. I'm going to add in a bit of shading. Oh, a bit too much there. Um, and you can see it's kind of like adding a nice little shadow in. Do that so that gets a bit of shading too. Um, and there you go. You can see you've got like a bit of shading going on. Let's make the grass. Let's select that grass color and then select a slightly darker tone um, for the you know, for behind this, for this top layer. I'm going to select box mode. I'm just going to drag it across. There you go, so you've got the lighter green on the outside, and we can select this lighter green, go back to attach mode, and we can actually bring it on top a little. So add in a couple of random blocks. Oh, too much blocks. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect here. Obviously, this is super symmetrical. You could actually turn off um, the mode here. One second, there we go. Bring that in there, maybe like that. So it's kind of like a little grass block with some bits poking through. Now this is very symmetrical. You could turn this off and go a bit more 
unique with each side. So I'm going to select R, remove these bits. Um, I'm going to delete a couple of bits here and, and there, and maybe even there a little. Come across here like that. Just just to make it a bit different, so you can kind of see this this grass block is looking kind of cool. Just to mess around with it and see what looks good. Some things may look terrible. Like I'm not a fan of this bit, but you can. This, it's all about tweaking. It's like pixel art. You're currently coming in and doing pixel art on the side of each one here. And here you go. So this is this is just a little example I've made here. Let's sort of bring it up there. Just so let's there you go. So this this is the kind of cube I've made. It looks kind of cool. It's not a perfect uh, size, but it, it works, right? It's it's how it is. Now what we can do is we can select this here. Now this will shrink its borders to match the size of this. So if I select this, you can see it now fits this a lot better. Um, and as you can see, it's X. It's the X angle, the Y axis, and the Z axis here. So X, Y, and C. Um, and if you can see in the bottom right here, you've got this little helper tool where you can actually select like corners to move it to the corner. I can select like the bottom corner, it'll give us the bottom corner. I'm going back to the top to give us a top corner. You can get different perspectives on this. Let's actually go to that top corner sort of view here. So select this, let's bring it down a little, and then let's hit render. And there you go, you can see this looking rendered in the uh, renderer. You can actually mess around with different uh, variables here, like the diffuse, the reflections. Um, and you can actually change the renderer. However, this isn't going to help you in game. So if you were to select the material and change it to like a glass material for that brown, uh, and turn the transparency all the way up, you can see this brown becomes glass, um, which isn't exactly what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that back to diffuse. I'm going to select model, uh, save this, and you can save this in here. I'm just going to call this grass.fox. Save, and that's just going to save it in here on the side. You can then switch between the other ones. And then at the bottom right here, we have the export options. Now, I normally export to OBJ, and then in Blender, I will convert this to a GLB just by importing it and exporting it as a GLB in Blender. Um, and then I can import this into my game engine and actually have it in here. Now I use GLBs because they kind of come with all their textures and that and Godot supports them really well. But OBJs work as well. You can drop OBJs in here if you just want to export straight. Um, I think I have a few things like the robot is actually a OBJ here you can see. And if you select this you can see what it looks like in here. And you get all their textures. So you've got Bot B texture there which you can drop onto a see this is the robot um, texture essentially uh, I also want that to be tune I didn't know that wasn't tune I'm adding like the tune effect from Godot in here which is why that floor you can see the floor has like the nice ripples coming across it kind of cartoony kind of nice for the game and yeah that's that's essentially how you can use magic of Foxel to export as an OBJ here let's just drop in here grass save and then I could drop this straight into this game so let's just I'm going to drop it just in my entities folder here. Go to Magical Fox. So I have an export folder where I drop it. And I can drag this into entities like that. And then I can drag that grass block in here. Now you can see this is huge because it's actually uh, one block is like one unit in here. Uh, so 40 blocks wide is normally one unit. So what I do is I select a grass object. You can double click this. Or open it up in import and change the scale. I normally change it to 0 0.25 when I'm what for my game, but it's gonna depend on what sort of game you're making. And then I'll re-import it. And there you go. You've got a nice little grass block here, but you're missing the colour for it. So what we want to do is drag in our grass dot um PNG and we can drag that onto it there to give it that texture. So there you go, you can see our grass in our game really easily, and you can move this around and position it however you and that, that's how you use Magic of Foxel. This is what Foxel art is. It's a lovely, cool, unique style for games. And it's basically the pixel art of the 3D world. Um, I did just delete that and forget to delete the grass. There we go. Delete. 
And there you go. That's that's gone from my game because it's not needed. Uh, but yeah, guys, so if you want to learn more about Foxal Art and Magic of Foxal, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on it um, and to learn how you can actually import things and rig characters and put them in your game, please let me know. I'd love to do video more videos on this topic. But guys, for now, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.